Hello and welcome to another reading vlog. Sorry my hair looks a bit fluffy at the moment. I had a bath earlier and it tends to... My beard has also gone fluffy. Look at that. Um, yeah, I'm back at my mum's house. This is my old childhood bedroom. God, I'm actually self-conscious about my hair. There we go, that's better. Beautiful. So I'm at my uh, in my old bedroom at my mum's house and I'm here for a few days just before Christmas. Uh, and I thought I would give you a quick reading update. So... On the train here, I finished reading uh, Dragons at Crumbling Castle by Terry Pratchett. I'm giving this a four out of five. Very, very humorous. Uh, it's like almost middle grade, not at all connected to the Discworld, although there are some stories in there that relate back to the carpet people, if you've ever read that. And uh, yeah, the rest of the stories, they, it's kind of like, you know, similar to what he's known for, humorous take on fantasy, more geared towards middle grade, some lots of illustrations and like, you know, cool stuff with uh, the layout and things, which I enjoyed, and uh, lots of stuff as well, sort of set in, you know, in small English villages in sort of the 1970s uh, when when he was a wee nipper. So yeah, enjoyed that. And then I read Race by Toni Morrison, which I gave a 4.5 out of 5 to. It's got selections from Song of Solomon, The Bluest Eye, and Beloved. Um, it's not always the easiest reading, and it, there's a lot of stuff that might make you uncomfortable, but it's certainly sort of thought-provoking, and uh, it was a pr pretty good introduction to her work, so I, I can't wait to, uh, to read some more of her books. There's also a recent essay called Making America White Again, an essay, uh, which is written in response to the election of Donald Trump, which uh, I thought was quite interesting, especially because a lot of the authors in this vintage mod mini moderns collection are, uh, are no longer with us. Either that or they might still be with us, but they were writing years ago, you know? And so I've now moved on to The, the Adventure of the Christmas Pudding by Agatha Christie, which is uh, a bunch of short stories. Uh, show, uh, <laughs> Not Sherlock Holmes. Uh, Poirot is in most of them, but there is also a Marple one, which I'm looking forward to. And obviously, I'm reading this because it's currently four days before Christmas or whatever it is. So, uh, so I'm going to go and read some more of this now. I just wanted to give you a quick, quick little update. And uh, oh yeah, we're going for a Christmas breakfast tomorrow, so I'm sure I'll take my camera to that. Hello, it's going to get a bit talky today, I guess, because I haven't uh, filmed an update for a little while. So, um, just to put some context into what has kind of gone on with my uh, my reading vlogs here. So, I did do a bunch of filming on Christmas Day with uh, Biggie, and so I'm going to do like a separate video for that, I think. And then we've got Before Christmas, which was the last clip you saw. And then kind of what's happened between then and now is... Um, the day after I got to Tamworth to stay at my mum's, in the morning I went out for breakfast with my grandparents, my mum and my uncle. I didn't have like any vegan food there really. I had hash browns, mushrooms and tomatoes. And I had to have the mushrooms done separately because they normally cook them with butter. But that's by the by. Uh, then we went back to my nan's for a bit. Uh, I had some rum and coke, had a nap because I got tired and also travel sick as well coming home. Then I went out that night to meet up with my dad and my half sister and her husband. So we went for a few more drinks and I went to see his dog. And then the day after that I had a lie in and then I went to see another grandparent and did a bit of shopping for my Christmas dinner which was in my Christmas video. Uh, and then I went to meet my mate Nick. I didn't film any of this just because it just seemed a bit weird to get the camera out and just start poking it in front of people's faces, you know? So, um, but yeah, I'm back in High Wycombe now. Since I've been back, I've mainly been doing a bit of reading, some tidying. I had my Christmas day yesterday. It's currently Boxing Day. And um, yeah, I'm watching Monkey Dust as well, which my friend Amy recommended. And it's a good shout. I, like, she recommended it like two months ago and I never got around to it. And I'm finally watching it and it is good. So... Last time I spoke to you, I was reading The, Chris the Adventures of the Christmas Pudding by Agatha Christie. So there are about five, six stories in this book. I gave it a 3.5 out of 5 overall. I did like uh, Greenshaw's Folly at the end, which was a Miss Marple story. Uh, and I like as well, part of the reason I liked it is because it was one of those Marple stories where she's in it, but she's not necessarily the centre of attention, you know? And I like the way that she can kind of quite subtly influence you know a murder investigation whereas Poirot Poirot's just all in your face you know so uh, the titular story the adventure of the Christmas pudding was pretty good basically involves like some jewels and a Christmas party and Hercule Poirot goes along to see a real English Christmas and um, what was that one there was also one with a chest I've forgotten what it was called let's see 
The Mystery of the Spanish Chest, which I felt like I'd read somewhere else before. But actually, my uncle was saying that because basically I've got a list of every published Agatha Christie title and some of them are only UK and some are only American so sometimes in the American collections they publish a story that's then published in a separate UK collection you know so there's some overlap so I might have read it I don't know okay after that I read Calm by Tim Parks and um, this is another vintage mini modern. This is basically, he's kind of skeptical about meditation and all that kind of stuff, but he goes off on a meditation retreat anyway. Yeah, I just thought it was amusing. He did kind of find some level of inner peace, I guess. I mean, I'm a skeptic myself, and so I could relate quite a lot to ha what he was saying. And also, I've read some reviews where people said like, oh, they didn't think he took it seriously or this or that. And he just wrote honestly, as far as I was concerned, you know. So uh, yeah. I thought it was pretty interesting if you're if you're kind of interested in that kind of you know sort of meditation and mindfulness and that kind of stuff I think that's quite or even if you're not if you're skeptical I think that's quite an honest little little book and that's an excerpt from Teach Us To Sit Still which is a full length work all right then I read The Employee Experience How To Attract Talent Retain Top Performers And Drive Results by Tracy Mailer and Matthew Ride this is another one that I got paid to read for a client so basically I read the book and then do like a spark note summary for it I gave this one a 3 out of 5 because and I was saying in my actual review of it for my book blog and for uh, Goodreads that there's not right there's not really enough enough new information or enough ideas here to fill out the uh, 2000 words that is how much I have to write for my my spark note summary so I'm gonna have to pad it out a bit and I feel like the book did the same it kind of padded out a hundred pages worth of information into like 200 but still there were some pretty cool bits in it, it talked about like uh, the employee contract which is the idea of not just the contract you sign when you start working somewhere but also the expectations you have any informal promises you've received and all that kind of stuff and um, the expectations that we have as well which I thought was pretty interesting to read about and overall it's just about the idea that if you have happy employees who understand how they kind of contribute to the overall direction of the business you're gonna have a more successful business you're gonna have happier customers and all that all right and now I started reading this on my way home this is a revival by Stephen King one of the few Kings I haven't read yet about 200 odd pages in it's interesting because it's kind of it mixes in like having a, a character who's a bit of a rocker a bit of a musician with also there's like a, a whole sort of religious cult almost leader kind of thing going on and um, I, that's a good mix for me although interestingly the main character in this just reminds me of Judas Coyne from uh, Heart Shaped Box by Joe Hill but uh, yeah it's alright I don't think it's King's Best I think it's probably on par for a 3.54 kind of thing and uh, yeah I, I'm just trying to work through everything he ever wrote so got to be done Anyway, on that note, I'm going to go and uh, do some um, editing. I think I'm going to do some editing. I've been trying to defrost my freezer because, yeah, when I came back from, from Tamworth, my freezer had just, like, expanded with ice, so I'm trying to defrost that. Other than that, uh, I think that's it. Yeah, editing and, uh, yeah, editing. All right. Bye-bye-bye. All right, I've done a little bit of booktube this evening. I'm also watching Train Spotting. Well, Train Spotting 2. And I've attempted to make this chocolate cross on Terra which has turned out like this. I'm gonna slice it. Don't forget to subscribe, survive, watch out for zombies. I'll see you guys next time. <sighs>so that was the vegan zombie there as you can see I've put these lights up I've got the actual main light off at the moment so uh, hopefully the lighting's all right that's not bad for a low light situation I suppose I've got the kitchen light on as well uh, all right let me give you a quick update and then I'm gonna bring this vlog to a close as it's now a new year so uh, what happened I forgot when I last updated basically over the weekend I was just crazy productive I did loads of laundry uh, I went and got my hair and beard trimmed I don't know if you can tell did do a bit of reading as well. Uh, oh, and Saturday night, actually, I went out in Wickham to the Bellevue, and because uh, there was a band there called the Rockola Morning Band, I believe, which uh, basically a guy called Steve from the area, he's got his uh, got a new album out, so he had an album launch. So uh, me, Dave, and Jordana went to check that out, and then we went to the Rose and Crown, which is my old local. Uh, 
Then, like, I guess we got New Year's Eve, New Year's Day. I was gonna go out on New Year's Eve, but it didn't really happen, so I just got drunk and then I fell asleep at 8 p.m. Woke up at 11 p.m. because the fireworks were going off and then couldn't sleep all night. But um, I'm trying to get back to a proper sleeping routine now. In fact, that's kind of why I've tried to make it look a bit nicer in here. Um, just because, you know, you gotta look after your surroundings and your mental health. What is going on with my hair today? It's a bit fluffy. Actually, I did go to meet Jordana again today. We went for some coffee, me, her, and her friend Alex. Uh, who he So he plays guitar and synths and stuff. Uh, we're potentially going to be putting like a group together, so I'll probably be playing bass, which means I need to get a new bass and I have no money for it, so I need to get some work done. But more on that later. In the meantime, I wanted to give you a quick update on my reading. So I finished reading Home by Salman Rushdie. So this is excerpts from Shame, Imaginary Homelands, East West and Joseph Anton, which I quite like that because there's no excerpt from, say, Midnight's Children or the Satanic Verses, which are the ones he's most famous for. I actually really enjoyed his writing style. I'll definitely be picking up some more of his work soon. And I can kind of see why he's rated as well. So I'd probably give this a four out of five. And, uh, yeah, I mean, the whole book is, it says here on the back, it's, uh, da, da, da. what it's like to reconfigure your past from fragments of memory and what happens when East meets West. So, you know, the, the, the coming together of the two different cultures. And I am still reading Murder on the Orient Express by Agatha Christie. I've almost finished now. It's actually, I wouldn't say it's her best, but it's, it is quite a good example of her style. So I'm glad that a lot of people do love it. Hello, Biggie. You're all right. And, uh... Yeah, because I think if you read this and you like it, you're going to like the rest of her stuff, if that makes sense. And also, then you've got like a nice little surprise, a, a nice little Brucey bonus. Bye then, cat, because then you get to pick up some books that you might enjoy more. So, um, yeah, I mean, I think the thing with Christie as well is you can start with pretty much any of her books. And quite often that's the book that people end up loving, you know? So, yeah, that is where I am at. Um... And now I'm going to go back and get to get on with some work. So anyway, thanks a lot for watching this week's weekly vlog. They're just becoming, I don't know, whenever I think I've got enough to post a video now. But it does quite help me because I can do these instead of doing like, uh, well, they're like weekly wrap-ups almost for me, you know. And uh, I have got some wrap-ups, some actual wrap-ups coming soon. And some end-of-the-year stuff. I need to catch up. Oh, and I'm taking part in Juniory with uh, Graham Quigley, Mindy's Book Journey, Luke Ash from Totally Pretentious. And possibly plot some points. I'm not sure. I think there's another person. But we're all going to read June Messiah. Because last January we all read June. So bring on January. Yay! Anyway, on that note, thanks a lot for watching. Don't forget to hit that like button if you've enjoyed this video. Hit subscribe for more and I will see you soon for another bookish video. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye. Hey, P.S. I found two more that I forgot to mention. <laughs> so I also read Liberty by Virginia Woolf. And uh, this is all basically about how female writers of the past were held back by their gender. And, uh, you know, the inherent sexism in society. And it's really quite interesting because obviously she was writing herself in, you know, in the early 1900s. So, um... I don't know, you get that, you get her perspective on the past and then you also get our own perspective on her perspective of the past, if that makes sense. Really super thought provoking. If you're into like just anything feminist, I would uh, check this out just because, especially feminism and books. If you like feminism and books, you'll like this. And, uh, and I'm starting to really like Virginia Woolf, actually. She used to, she, uh, her Mrs. Dalloway, I read that at university and it used to be my most hated book. And then I reread it for Catalyst Reads Rereadathon and loved it. So there we go. And the only other thing is the official Highway Code, which I finished reading the printed version of. Uh, I've also listened to the audiobook of it this month. And I'm going to listen to the audiobook of it again because I need to. Because I keep failing my theory test, my practice theory, and I need to learn to drive. Okay, so that is it. So this time I am officially out. So I'm not going to do the outro again. I'll just say see you later and then we'll cut to the end slate. So see you later.